Wang Shilong. Born in 1930 in Henan Province to a relatively wealthy family, he had spent most of his childhood in relative ease. That was until the Chinese Civil War occurred, where he then served in the propaganda department of the People's Liberation Army as a photographer and an oil painter between 1948 and 1950. Wang had decided to become a photojournalist for the local newspaper and travel through central China for more than 30 years. During his career, Wang focused the majority of his photography on the working class people around him. By having his focus on the working class people around him, Wang was effectively giving them power. By presenting the people and only the people, especially in positions of power such as talking to Chairman Mao or even showing educational progress being made in villages, this not only gave the people confidence, it gave them the false idea that they were in charge of their own fate. What Wang had also done was craft the image of Mao Zedong amongst the people in China. In the photographs that Wong had taken of Mao, he is almost indistinguishable from the villagers around him. He looks as if he belongs there, and simply just another farmer. By doing so, Wong had crafted the image of Mao that he was just a man just as any other person. Wong had shown the people that their leader was simply human just like them, and further increased Mao's reputation amongst the people. From Mao's newfound influence amongst the people in China, he used this to shape their beliefs, such as telling his people to throw away the old bourgeois art and traditions, and by burning it, symbolize a new step forward amongst his people, that they were no longer chained by their own history. This is not to say that Mao was entirely against the arts. He often had traveling opera bands that would travel from village to village telling stories of the Chinese Civil War, and how the People's Liberation Army were essentially the good guys. Wong often followed these troops as their theatrical expressions often made for great photographs, while also showing the readers of the paper how to properly use art. Art was no longer something that was held to the individual anymore. Art had to be something that supported the Communist Party. Anything else would be treated as a traitorous action. One of the other photographers that we will look into is Li Shengshun. Li Shengshun, born in 1940 in Dailan, was born to a poor family. At the time of his birth, the city was located in Kyoteng Li's territory, where Japan maintained the puppet regime Manchukuo. His mother died when he was three, and his brother, who was a member of the People's Liberation Army, was killed during the Chinese Civil War. Li helped his father, who was a cook on a steamship and later as a farmer, until Li was ten years old. Li rose to the top of his class despite starting school late. He later earned a spot at the Shangshung Film School, where he acquired much of his photographic knowledge. In 1963, Li graduated from Shangsheng Film Institute Photography Department and entered the Hizhelong Daily, a local newspaper company located in the city of Harabin in northeastern China. He then enrolled at the photography department of the National Police Academy University in Beijing and taught journalism for 15 years. During the Cultural Revolution, he captured and safeguarded nearly 100,000 photographs that documented all aspects of his revolutionary movement. Comparing the two photographers that have been talked about, one thing that differs from Li's photos to that of Wang's were the people as well as the events that Li photographed. While Wang's photos have shown a very clean, pristine life with a Chinese man or woman, Li was unafraid to show a different type of reality. In Li's photos, he had shown how life was. In this photo, a man is being publicly shamed for being a traitor of the Chinese Communist Party and its beliefs. By examining this one photo, in contrast to Wong's photography, you can see contrasting elements between the two. First, none of Wong's photos had ever shown someone to be any type of distress. In Lee's photo, we can clearly see that this man here is in distress from his actions. Another point would be the people that Lee is representing. While Wong is showing the more homely country folk, Lee is showing the reality of living in the city. As while well, living in the countryside, one is able to know everyone that lives by them more intimately, because there are usually fewer people in the town or village. While the city seems to be a place of constant change and action, meaning that most people don't know each other, there's a lack of trust in these cities as a result. This lack of trust in cities also brings into the fray the acceptance of conformity. As in the photo of the man being humiliated, almost everyone in the photo is dressed the same, save for the people's prisoner. This term, the people's prisoner, is what Lee had achieved in his photography during these events that effectively brought the people into power. As stated before, Wong had, through his use of photography, given the ordinary people the power that they did not have before during the Chinese Civil War. This newfound power to prosecute an individual for not conforming to the correct social standards that were represented 
was embraced by the Chinese people as they were now finally in power, as their leader Mao had promised them that they would be. This reaction to the newfound power that the people had felt in China had also had another effect. People had elevated Mao to an almost godlike being because of it. They had also noticed this newfound power their leader had over the people in China. This picture is what? Mao 遵循老师的一个教导他的正面需要记录,负面也要记录,这样的话才合起来是一个完整的历史。With his ever-growing power over the people in China, Mao had inspired many movements, such as the Red Guard movement. This is when young people had clad themselves in brown army uniforms and gone to towns and villages around China, and made sure that these people in these towns and villages were following the correct ways to be a proper communist. This further gave the power to the people movement greater credibility as the only ones that were in any sort of position of power were the people themselves. The people were their own king, and Mao was their undisputed god. Overall, these two photographers, Wang Shilong and Li Sangshen, had shown two very different sides of China during the years of 1958 through 1976. They had shown the growth of the people, as well as the growth and power of their communist leader, Mao Zedong. These two men had approached their photographs in very contrasting matters. As Wang had shown grace and elegance through his countryside photos in small towns and villages, showing the proper way and how to behave as a man of the Communist Party, Li had shown this growth of power had affected people internally. Their actions and movements spoke louder than their ideas. The overgrowing confidence in people caused them to form groups where this power was at its peak, such as the Red Guard movement, which not only gave the people power, in particular, it gave the youth power. The youth didn't know how much of a voice for this movement, but with their newfound powers, they were able to express their gratitude, not only for the Communist Party, but for their leader, Mao Zedong. They expressed this gratitude by hunting down suspected betrayers of the Communist Party, and they did so without remorse or much evidence. While Wang had shown the people in power using their newfound powers to help those around him, he was concerned with the realistic approach to how power gets into the minds of the people 